This is the Blockade Pinball Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Freebus, a.k.a. Shut Your Trap. Joining me, as always, halfway across the world, Jerry Morgan. G'day, everyone. How are you going today? It's going to be a short one, isn't it? It's going to be a short one. Yeah, you know, so we go uh, two weeks without having a podcast, and now we need to crank one out quick because both me and Jared have things to do. <laughs> yes. So, as... yes, we need to pump it out. Pump it out. But that's okay, right? Uh, I mean... Yep. We don't need to stretch and, and fluff this, do we? Sure we no. do. Why not? Oh, okay. <laughs> well, we can. We can, but we don't have to. We Let's see if we can actually keep this podcast to 30 minutes today. Oh, That's our challenge. Oh, my goodness. We, we, I've we... got a timer running. I've got a timer <laughs> running on my screen. <laughs> we, didn't we try this at one time? Yeah, we did. We, we promised that we were going to keep it to 30 minutes, and we failed abysmally. But today we have a, we have a reason <laughs> to do so. Well, I do. I've got medical appointments and center changes to do for Sienna, so... It's, uh, let's crack on. Crack let's on. Go. Okay. Go. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> that's, the, that's the order of the day. So, first things first, because, you know, things have actually happened, uh, mm. mainly in terms of the Elvira table. It's actually yeah. real. We've actually seen what it looks like. Yeah, and it actually looks pretty good. They've Doesn't gone for a bit look of a too shabby. Style, haven't they? Yeah, they're going to feel like a comic style this time. Well, I mean, the um, the good news is, is that it uh, it isn't just a reskin of Wonelli. Hmm. Because that was the the rumor that it was. That just, was a scare. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that Jesus. was yet another Wonelli uh, uh, redo. So that's the good news. The bad news is it still is like Won. Well, not so much like Wonelli, but like Beatles. It's that premium pricing. Yeah, they've got no pro. It's, so it's like, um, it's done by Kapow, isn't it? So um, I think. I don't know, the is the table itself do. being done by Kapow? Uh, um, I think it was worked on by Greg Ferrares and the other dude who are part of Kapow. So um, I'm just trying to find canonical information on the internet about it, but Stern doesn't seem to have any sort of uh, <laughs> information on their website about it. I was going to so. say, in other words, Jared is uh, furiously uh, scrolling over to Pinside and seeing what's, uh, what's no, there. No, it's Pinside. No, I've got I've got the photos here that are blurry as hell because um, they I don't know like it, <laughs> this site is loading all the ads first and not the actual content so right. yeah yay. Uh, yeah so I think there is yeah I think that's the case it's actually it's the Greg Ferrez and and the other guy who who um, who de designed it and that's why it's got the weird pricing the non-standard stern pricing. All right, I mean it's kind of a shame because that's going to limit how many of these things make it out into the wild um because i think i think essentially the premium is the pro so they're going to be doing a large run of premiums um then they got ellie and then they got like your know, bonkers ellie you know which is just like <laughs> with extra shiny stuff that no one really cares about on it like signed elvira stuff and etc or some people i know care about it but honestly who cares right. as a player you don't care right as an owner of the machine you do yeah the the yeah. things that i kind of noticed about it um was that it? There's lots of little tiny Elviras all over the place, and of course, there's a big mm. Elvira on the back. But kind of akin to what Zen was having to do with their censoring, uh, it's interesting how often Elvira's arm is basically covering the cleavage line. Ah, yes, yes. <laughs> so it is a strategically placed um, arm action. Yes. yes. So I, I just kind of found that funny that I guess in today's uh, friendly environment, or family-friendly environment, that's what we're doing. Um, the other thing that I noticed in that whole video that they uh, posted was we only heard one line of dialogue from Elvira. Yeah, I didn't see the video. I've only been looking at the screenshots. Okay. Um, and uh, look, the, I didn't see the video. I saw the teaser video of Elvira, you know. <laughs> yeah, boy, with, that told us theme. a lot, didn't it? <laughs> yeah, not a lot. No, that was probably just an animation from the game. It, it, actually, it was very Tales from the Crypt, actually. If you ever played Tales from the yeah. Crypt Pinball, how it animates its way through. So, yeah, I, I thought, oh, that's interesting. Yeah, no, there's a, there's a longer minute-long video that actually shows the ball in action on the play field. Uh, a couple of people have already broken down that footage on YouTube. Like, it's amazing uh, how you can take one minute of footage and stretch it out to 20 minutes. <laughs> uh, people, you know, have speculation. People love it. Yes, that's right. One thing I noticed, though, that was interesting is that there's a... Uh, there's a a playfield element that I haven't seen since Circus Voltaire. Oh, what's um, that? And that is the eject from the crypt on the middle left, sorry, middle right side of the playfield. 
there is a um, an up kicker that just throws the ball back onto the play field again. And yes, lands I, in a spot that you're probably going to want to put Mylar down or something, right? <laughs> I think so. Yeah. And so it, it looks very much like the eject from um, the ringmaster on uh, on Circus Voltaire. I thought, oh look, it's a Circus Voltaire up kicker. There we go. But um, everything else looks interesting. Like the the mansion is interactive. The crypts well, interactive. Well, the, the mansion also. They're <clears throat> on top of the middle spire. It spins. And it, it spins, yeah. totally reminded me of Sorcerer's Lair. Oh, yes. Yeah, the, the, yeah you're right. Yeah, that's Except for it actually has little symbols that probably tell you what the heck is going on much better than what Sorcerer's Lair does. Yeah, from what I can see, there's an eyeball and an Elvira head and something on there. I don't really know what the hell's going on there. Yeah. But, um, but <laughs> there's an Elvira's back door. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know, you can def there's definitely entendres, uh, double entendres on the field. Oh, yes, um, everywhere. I, I would love to hear <laughs> the the deadheads have kind of a, uh, it's kind of like a, a, a wheel a that spins. Like it, so it's a smash, a bash toy that spins until it finally opens up into a, a, a hole that you can shoot. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I'm curious to know what the deadhead jokes are going to be this time. Oh, uh, <laughs> I think they're going to be pretty good. I would hope. Oh, so it's like a, it's almost like the deadhead's on a roto target or something. Exactly. Like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It looks very much like that, actually. Which is cool. Like, it's good to see some mechanisms like that making a, an appearance back in. And I noticed that they've got the, the gargoyle hoppers instead of the leapers. Which is the, a in... truly mechanical uh, effect. It's basically just a piece of metal that has a slight angle out to it. So when the ball hits it, it flicks, and that's what flicks the gargoyle up. Yeah, there's no solenoid involved in that. No, it's which very is very mech. smart. Yeah, I mean they they had that on um, scared stiff for the leapers, yeah, and it worked really well, um, and until the uh, the leapers shear off, but you know, <laughs> <laughs> with thousands and thousands of hits. But yeah, it looks like an interesting title. I've got a feeling based on what um, Jimmy from Netherworld was uh, very excited about. I have a feeling that we're going to probably see this game when it gets available down here in Australia. Because I mean, Elvira is a perfect fit for Netherworld. Oh, for like, Netherworld, it's, it's, just... it's perfect. Yeah, yeah. I, I would really like to see what's going on on the LCD screen, though, because obviously that's where it's going to shine. Yeah, oh, I mean, exactly right. I mean, you got to imagine they're probably going to show maybe old, old movie clips because those are public domain, so you could just use them. <laughs> probably, if, yeah. Um, I mean, they even have a film, there's even a plastic uh, piece on the play field that has a, like a film strip with various yeah. film images on there. So Yes, I see that. That's on the ramp. I mean, it might be able to capture Elvira in a way that the other two tables never quite were in terms of capturing her, what her show used to be like. Yeah, in action. Exactly yeah. right. Yeah. 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 yeah it's yeah. going to be interesting. Uh, at least with the with this way, the the, f the funny thing is that when I was reading the, the, the feature descriptions on it, it was like I was just reading Scared Stiff's feature descriptions like mm -hmm. oh look there's a, there's a there's a crate uh, it looks quite a lot like you know the crate except instead of shooting the door it lifts up the lid and it traps the balls and then you've got the the deadheads you know they they were introduced in scared stiff right and yeah yeah i i'm just going well there's a lot of there's a lot of oh, let's just say there's a lot of homage played to um scared stiff in here so as long as they vary up the way it works i don't think it looks like the same sort of linear play that um scared stiff was because scared stiff really was a williams um oh, wpc 95 game that was emulating a system 11 let's be serious <laughs> yeah it, it was very very simplistic gameplay which was for that particular era what they were sort of angling for like they were going with jackpot and scared stiff to try and get pinball players back into a simplified rule set so i hope that this doesn't take that approach and go back just oh just complete the the things and then you get the whatever that thing is in the middle the freak flyer but fryer i don't know it looks very much like i'm looking at the freak flyer in the middle the 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 thing right between the flippers i'm going oh look it's a stiffer meter you know yeah i mean there's not exactly like you said it's paying serious homage but at least it's not the same layout I mean, for the no, most part, it's a f there, there's no, a, no, it's, a, it's an interesting <laughs> fan. It's got it's got a very interesting fan layer. There's, there's stuff to do on it for sure. So yeah. look, I I can't wait to play it. Put it that way, it looks interesting yeah. enough that it's like, yep, 
looks looks pretty fun. It looks like um, on this perspective shot that I've got here, that um, the the Circus Voltaire, the Circus Voltaire um, up kick, it looks like it kicks the ball over to the crypt targets. Um, yes, it does. And if you watch the video, you can actually see that uh, happen. Mm, yeah. So interesting. Yep. Looks good. Yeah, it looks real good. All right. So anyway, there was there was one bit of news that happened while we were absent. Uh, hmm. and, and in case you're wondering what some of this uh, absentia <laughs> is, um, uh oh, dropping frames. There we go. Um, Who needs those frames? Right. I I got a a job working for the mouse as a photographer, and that's going to be on weekends. So that's uh, why we're doing this on Friday and not on Saturday. That's uh, right. Well, I'm doing it on Saturday. So well, yeah. Well, there you, go. you know. Uh, I'm from the future, though, so yeah, <laughs> go figure. The the fun part is, is I get to go into the park whenever I want now, for free. Yeah, for free. That's right. So which is pretty cool. Which of course I then did for research. Uh, mm, of course. <laughs> well, I had to go check out the new Star Wars land, and uh, cause, right. you know people are going to ask about it, and I need to have seen it for myself. And like I say, pretty dang cool. It's yeah, right. I bet. Like, like in terms of integration, if you want to think about uh, the Hogwarts at Universal Studios, I know this is all foreign to you, Jared. Um, mm. <laughs> but uh, uh, whereas that is a really immersive environment, this is almost even more so because they literally sell nothing in there that says Disneyland on it. Oh Every, wow! It's everything all themed and it's all Star Wars. All Star Wars, and even to the point when you're walking around the land, and you know, normally there's like arrows that point, you know, go this way for this and this way for that. There's no mention of anything else in the park, and there's no mention of rides. It just looks like spaceport that direction. Um, it doesn't say wow. restrooms or whatever. I mean, you got to keep your eyes open and spot these things. So it's kind of it's kind of cool, just really immersive in that in that manner. Wow. Okay, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, okay, but enough of that. Because we're yeah. on a we're on a we're on a time budget here. Uh, yeah. Let's talk about something that everybody has been dying to know, mm. as related to Zen, and it's related to their next release. Mm. Here's what I can tell you, folks. We've actually had the beta since the end of July. Yep. Yeah. So it's about that. Um, so you can imagine how much biting of our tongue there has been going on. <laughs> mm, particularly with the forum conversations that have been raging on um, digital pinball fans. Yeah, exactly. So we've had the beta since then. The beta looks phenomenal. Yes, it's probably some of their finest work, actually. Um, and when we say that, we mean the Zen enhancements are hands mm. down, in my opinion the best yet that they have done oh yeah yeah by far they have it's almost like the uh the previous releases have been working up to this point yes for them to actually exactly. get get accustomed to the the workflows to how they present um the zen enhancements they the everything is very very good so officially set your hype meter to pretty hype pretty hype yeah <laughs> Now, what else am I allowed to say about what's coming up? In this next release... Yeah, I know, not much. Um, in this next release, the flipper physics that were applied to uh, the last pack, uh, yes, they will be obviously applied to this next pack. No, they have not been implemented yet into the first three packs. Uh, mm. It is on their list of uh, things to do, but it has not been tackled this go around. So, hype up here. Now lower your hype a little bit because yeah, just get that in your head. It's not going to be there, so that you don't face the disappointment and the anticipation. You can you know kill kill that uh, little uh, buzz right now. That's right. That's right. Um, what else can I say? So, um, regarding the Star Wars release, <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, I just wanted to read this. Um, uh, so, we're not going to be able to have Mel on uh, when this pack is announced, um, basically. And if you followed Mel on Twitter, you'd realize You'll the know guy why. is insanely <laughs> busy right now. Like, they've yeah. been to two or three different game shows. They've got Castle Storm 2 releasing. They just released Switch, uh, Star Wars, which I keep on now seeing. 
it's, it's the funniest thing. I don't know if you've experienced it, Jared, but I keep on seeing game sites reviewing it as if the Star Wars tables are brand new. Yes. Yeah. It's like, wow, these Star Wars tables, where'd they come from? And I'm it's, like, yeah. where have you been like three, four years ago? <laughs> yeah. Yep. Well, you know, that's the thing. If you're not on a platform, if you're not on Steam, you don't know. Or, you know, you're not on a Steam console or Android or... <laughs> <laughs> right. So basically all these people are living in their little Switch bubble. Um, yeah. That being yeah. said, universally, everybody's loving it. Um, I mean, yes, it's, which it's, is great. Zen's getting a lot of the attention that they well deserve with this. And I also kind of almost wonder if this has anything to do with it being a physical release and not just a digital you're quite possibly correct there. People like to have... I know that, you know, the Switch, the, the actual cartridges for Switch are grossly underwhelming. They're like a little <laughs> SD card, right? But, yeah, giant you know, case! Little, 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 little SD card. <laughs> ridiculous. It is ridiculous. Like, having to see the little cartridges for it, it's like, why do you ship them in such a big case? But, you, I mean, we could go down the reasons why they do that for retail, but let's not. Right, let's um, not. But, you know, it is crazy to see that, you know, they have a little physical thing. And you, you can see that Mel was getting very excited about that, that it was actually a physical, like, master, essentially. Right, and um, I think, it. I mean, it, it, it's one of those things where it's, it's hard to stand out in a digital store. Yeah, but is. then if you go to an actual, EB, you know, a Best Buy or, or, or like yeah, GameStop or whatever, and there it yeah. is sitting on the shelf, I there's, this is where physical media about has that. a connect. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. If you can pick it up and hold it, you've basically got the sale, right? That's how it works. Yeah. Um, yep. So anyway, here's what I want to read uh, that, that Mel said that we could say, and he said this. Uh, there are only two companies in the world shipping Star Wars retail games in the last eight years, and one of them is Zen. They're kind of yeah. bad about They're They're just a, just a touch proud about that fact. <laughs> the, the, the other one was Swator, wasn't it? It's like Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. I think I, that I was the other know. one. I think that one was pretty popular on PC a while ago. Wait, the Knights of the Old Republic? Yeah, Star Wars. Uh, that's ancient. Yeah. I mean, EA is probably the one that has it with uh, with Battlefield. They're oh, the is only, that the other? Yeah, they're, they're, the only, that would be the other. That's the other. only other Star Wars game that I'm aware of. That's, yeah. That's you know. I, th so I that's, think you're behind the times here, Jared. <laughs> more than likely, if it, if it comes to, to to Star Wars games and PC, yes, absolutely, one hundred percent behind the times, curmudgeonly even. Curmudgeonly, yeah. yeah. Um, so anyway, I, I I know it's not much Zen news, but you guys have been in an absolute utter drought for anything Zen. Not wasn't Star Wars related, so there's yeah. a tiny little drip of water. <laughs> That's right. And like I said, it, it's been killing us because we've had it since the end of July. Yeah, we've been <laughs> so wanting to talk about it. We so wanted to talk about it, we just can't. It's the curse of the NDA. Curse of the NDA, but um, like I said, the, the animations are hands down phenomenal. I don't think you guys are be disappointed in the least when it comes to those. We're definitely really excited for more than us to see it. Because <laughs> it's going to be like, <laughs> I think you're going to be pretty impressed. Okay, so now that that's out of the way, in this rather shortened uh, podcast, this go round, Jared, uh, you have been posting furiously pictures of your latest restoration. Why don't you talk about a little bit about uh, what's been going on with that? Yes, I have. I've been um, fiercely restoring Force Two, um, which is I've decided to make the first cow off the rank. I've got I've got um, uh, Pink Panther sitting there as well. But I think there's something about Force 2 that made me want to actually go and get this thing ready first. Um, Force 2 is a two-ball, multi-ball, Gottlieb System 80 Generation 2 game. Um, so Star Race was a Generation 1 System 80, um, which is different to System 80 A and B. It's just like the, the second slight revision to what they've done. Essentially, they've enabled multi-ball on System 80, like first release is, is essentially all it does. You should have um, led with that. Because I felt like yeah. I just read the fine print of a lawyer speak. <laughs> yeah. So um, the uh, I'm just doing the cabinet first because you need to get the cabinet done before you can you you know you need to be able to put legs on the thing so that you can then get the play field out and start doing stuff with that. So I've been focusing on the back box first because it was probably the worst. So if you've been following me along on Instagram, you'll see that I've had to um, pretty much sand back the um, all the uh, stenciling on the side of the cabinet go over it with black spray 
fill lots of holes, rebuilds chunks of stuff that have been, you know, out of the cabinet, you know, typical African pinball machine quality stuff. Um, <laughs> and, and it really makes you wonder what in the heck is going on over there that uh, these cabinets are, well, I mean, I know that your Star Race is water damage, but this, you didn't say it was water damage, did you? No, this, this one's, in, this one's like polar opposite, like the cabinet, I don't think I'm going to have to do much booking at all on the actual cabinet itself. It was just the head box that was missing a bit of wood. So, yeah, there, there has been, I think water has got on the bits of the back box at some point because there's a bit of um, planking on some of the uh, ply. But I've decided not to worry about that too much. I've kept that patina and just gone over the top of it with um, paint and stencil. So there's basically the back box. The interesting thing about the back box is I had to cut and make my own stencils for it because Force 2 doesn't have a stencil pack that you can buy. So I I did that. I traced the image on the uh, the good image before I started sanding it. I used just wax paper for it. It's pretty easy. Um, then cut it out with a show, with a scalpel, exacto knife, and um, sprayed it. But the the yellow I decided to brush on because the yellow, particularly on the side that it planked, you you need the paint a little bit thicker than what you can get with the spray. Um, so you can sort of cover up a bit of that planking a bit. So I did that first to sort of like give it the the base it needed, and then I went over the top with green. Um, and the planet looks good. It's actually got that that good sort of um, feathered edge look that you get with stencils as well. Because all <laughs> yeah, I did is that, got... that imperfect look, as we would uh, say. <laughs> and it's it's funny when I was doing my research on how to cut stencils, people were going, "Oh, geez, you know, I'm using you know proper stencil um, material like polycarbonate or something. I'm cutting it, but I'm just not getting that feathered look. Or like I'm using frisket and I'm not getting that feathered look on the stencils." And people are going, oh, what I do is I put the stencil up on some coins and then I spray it over and I go, or you could just do the cheap way like me and go and get some Ikea furniture, keep a big bit of cardboard from the Ikea furniture and use the cardboard to cut out the stencils on. And it's perfect height. So you get that feathering. <laughs> Good solutions. See, yeah, this, so is, why, this did... is why, Jared, I wish that you were, uh, uh, you know, not halfway across the world and instead, you know, lived next door to me because you come up with good solutions that I get stymied by. <laughs> yeah oh i do it out of convenience it's like right what i need to do to get this done all right that'll do and it's funny the the imperfect solutions are often the best when you're doing restorations like this in like unless you want to be there's there some people who take restorations very seriously i'm not one of those people i <laughs> you're, prefer you're a keep... get it done so i can play it <laughs> I'm, well i'm a get it done but also make it look better than it was but still keep some of that original patina like there were some people that were restored like i've seen um like what you can do to a pinball machine to get it restored amazingly well and that's that's great and everything but for me i kind of like to see a little bit of battle battle hardness on the machine yeah um because it, it's it says volumes about what it's what a history is so i don't want it to look like junk but i also don't want it to look mirror finished perfect it's got to have a bit of character to it um, yeah i mean i think there's a time and a place for some of that stuff because i like I said, I saw a, I mean, talk about mirror perfect, somebody that had restored firepower, uh, which is a black cabinet and they, it was piano black. I mean, that oh, yeah. high gloss, shiny, the table yeah. looked absolutely gorgeous and it was amazing to look at, but it does make it seem more like a museum piece and not something yeah. that had a life. Yeah, it, it makes it look like something that's literally just come out of the box, and that's not correct. Like everyone knows that. Like for, uh, there was one at um, BPAC that was a uh, oh, I forget what it was. It was a Stern Electronics. Um, forget the name of the game, but I, we covered it in the last podcast, and it was absolutely amazing as a restoration. And it felt the same. Like it felt a little bit too clean. Like it was like, yeah, I'm not sure about that. So, yeah. yeah. Mm. I'm, yeah, I'm in two minds. Anyhow, anyway. so that's what I was doing. Um, I was doing the, the, the back box, and I did the light board as well. I found a tip that I um, didn't find out last time when I was doing Star Race. What I decided with Star Race was to just roller the, the light board in the back box, and I had to do a lot of um, uh, cutting out of paint of the light sockets last time because of that decision. Oh, so okay. what I did this time is I, I decided to, to spray – and just using, I'm just using spray bombs, like, you know, just the spray rattle cans right, you rattle get cans. from, you, yeah. yeah, and honestly, it's fine. <laughs> um, you don't need a, a full spray thing to do that, you just use rattle cans, it's fine. Anyhow, so the the backboard or the lightboard, it was uh, 
pretty rough. It was gross. There's photos up on Instagram if you want to look at it. Um, and I got it back to – I decided, decided to go with flat white on it because I believe that's what they use on all the backboards is it's flat rather than gloss. Um, and I used earplugs to plug up all the light holes. So yep, I got your con trick. Yeah, it's really good. It works so well too. And um, yeah, I had no problems with uh, light sockets getting grubby and full of paint. So yeah, I recommend that trick. Um, so yeah, the back box is done. My focus now is on the cabinet, but I've got a bit of a challenge. I've got to find some legs that aren't shop legs for it. And in Australia, they're easy enough to find over in the US because that's where they make them. But in Australia, they cost a fortune to import. And people have got Belly Williams legs and Stern legs, but no Gottlieb legs. There's oh, three legs. They are different, uh, different shape. They well, it's not so much that they're different shape; they're different height. Right. So they're okay, 20, yeah, yeah. twenty-six inches high is the shortest length, and the shortest length is a Gottlieb length. Then you go to twenty-eight. So I'm just going: Will two inches really make a difference? Probably not. I don't. I mean, think. you can make the adjustment. Well, although the holes are already drilled, I was going to say you just move where the leg is drilled into the cabinet. But now you don't want to drill new holes because that's a pain in the butt. No, that's a pain. Yeah, it's a pain in the butt. No, I think I might have to, based on what I can get, I might have to actually go with the, the slightly longer legs on these because the, I've, I've dealt with shop legs before um, with Star Race, and you can restore them, but pain in the ass. Like, I'd rather just spend $130 and get beautiful chrome shiny legs that I can put on the machine and not have to worry about it. Right. Yeah, so that's sort of where I'm at with um, Force 2. So it's, it's moving along. I've At the moment, I'm in the process of sanding the underside of it and um, bogging up the bottom because somebody, classic classic African, uh, somebody decided to gain access to the coin box um, through the bottom of the machine. And to fix the problem, all they did is they got a big bit of ply and they whacked it over where the coin box goes. So it was like this extra bit of ply in the bottom of the machine. So. Yeah, that, that I think was my favorite picture was uh, the, the hole yeah. in the bottom from somebody trying to, creative use of trying to steal, except for the fact that there's usually a metal coin box there. But not everybody does that. There's pl plenty of times when I know that... People uh, just have the coins fall in the bottom. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen it. Uh, okay, so well, if you want to, uh, follow to along, follow along on uh, Jared's progress, and uh, I don't have any progress, so too bad. But uh, right there in the corner, <laughs> there's my uh, there's my Twitter, and there's Jared's Twitter. So go ahead and uh, hop on those, and uh, <laughs> and then you can follow along and see what's what's going on with that. And then, as usual, you should probably hey look at that. Follow along the uh, Blockade Pinball Podcast also. Um, because that's where any and all news that we can share, we do share. Uh, so just to summarize for those of you that uh, came late into the Twitch stream, um, the Elvira table looks pretty good. It's going to be costly. Uh, hopefully it'll be on locations, but we'll have to see. Uh, yeah. Regarding the Zen announcement that we have, basically all we were announcing was that, yes, we have played beta of the next pack. Uh, the animations are wonderful, but we can't really say anything beyond that other than the fact that the uh, Volume 4 Flipper Physics, yes, they are applied to this next pack. No, they are not going to be applied to Volumes 1 through 3 yet. Um, that's still mm. something that's on their list of things to do. And then we just covered Jared's uh, fun with... Force 2 Restoration. Force 2, yeah. Follow right. me on, on Instagram to see pics of that. Yay. Oops. I'm hitting buttons randomly. <laughs> just all the buttons all the buttons I've like, got my fingers on the wrong thing sorry about that um, okay so uh, like we said short podcast because uh, we've got uh, things that have to do but at least there's something um, and keep your, your eyes and ears open because I'll still do gameplay uh, throughout the week but my schedule's all jumpy and messy so ignore the uh, the schedule that Twitch says that I have <laughs> yeah. that's right anything else to add Jared? Nothing else to add, Your Honor. Nothing else to add. Nothing further, Your Honor. <laughs> okay, so, uh, and, and tell you what, folks, we're going to end this stream, but uh, I'll pop into the chat and I can chat with you folks because Jared's got a buzz. So that's what will happen there. Uh, for yo's listening at home, well, why don't you go over to twitch.tv slash blockade underscore pinball and... Uh, <laughs> I'm like, what is it again? Uh, yeah, and uh, uh, follow follow the Twitch stream, and that way you can find it and watch live and see comments that way. Uh, otherwise, it just appears as usual on YouTube with no interaction. 
So see, Uchi. we're trying to be yeah. with you guys, uh, and you guys can interact. Normally, we get engaged a little bit more with uh, with our chatters, but we got no time for that. So, all right, I'm gonna say yeah. bye bye, and Jared. I say bye bye too. Bye bye. But you're forgetting what are we talk about next time. Uh, it's most likely gonna be some stuff and things. Stuff and things, folks. All right, we'll yeah. catch y'all later. See bye. ya.